Hey there and welcome to this free preview of our brand new tutorial, Photo Editing 201. Hey guys, my name is Aaron Nace. I'm the founder of Flurn and I'm super excited to announce Photo Editing 201. This is a brand new tutorial. It's part of a series including 101, 201, and 301. Whether you're photographing a landscape or a person, pretty much all the time, those images go through post-production, whether it's Lightroom or Capture One or Photoshop. So we wanted to make a series of tutorials that takes you through that entire workflow. This is such a fun tutorial and we work on a ton of images, solving all kinds of common problems, like people need to be retouched, we need to remove objects, from the background, we need to do some compositing, we need to change colors, we need to work on our exposure levels. Sometimes we need to move objects around in our photos to help out with the visual flow. And it's super hard to make your images better if you don't know what to look for. So we show you through the entire process and identify some key things that you often might wanna change in your photo, and then we teach you how to do it. All right guys, we got a free preview of Photo Editing 201. I hope you enjoy it. Hey guys, and welcome to chapter two. This is our neon photo shoot, and this was so much fun. Now, we actually did an extended cut of this in Photography 101. So if you guys are Flurn Pro subscribers, definitely check out Photography 101. We show you the entire photo shoot. So the concept was like a neon shoot. We basically knew we were gonna use lighting, like strobe lights, in fact, indoors with gels on them. Now, gels basically just change the color of light. So if you have any kind of light, whether it's you know sunlight in a window or a strobe, whatever have you, basically is gel is just a very thin piece of plastic that has different colors on it. So when the light shines through that plastic, it changes the color of the light. So in this case, we're shooting with a teal and a magenta light, which just kind of creates a little bit more of like a fun, type of atmosphere for your images. And it's not gonna be appropriate for like every photo you do. For instance, if you're doing like a, a headshot for a corporate magazine or something like that, that's not, you don't wanna use a bunch of gelled lights. But if you're going for something a little bit more fun, a little bit more conceptual, a little bit more funky and things like that, that's when you can start to introduce different colored lighting. So that was the whole idea behind this shoot. So this photo was done with two Einstein flashes. Both of those were in soft boxes and both of those were gelled. So we had one that was gelled teal and one that was gelled magenta. Now, in this case, we also had a fire in the photo because there was a really cool fireplace in our location. So I wanted to make sure that the shutter speed was slow enough to actually capture detail from the fire. So we're shooting at one over 25th of a second, which is a relatively slow shutter speed. We're also shooting at an aperture of f5.6 at ISO 100. So 5.6 means we're gonna have a reasonably deep depth of field. So most of our subject is going to be in focus and our flashes are going to freeze any type of motion that's in our frame. This image was shot with a Canon 5D Mark III on a 24 to 70 lens, which is incredibly versatile. It's sharp edge to edge and really resolves detail great. So again, the whole idea here was to just create something that's kind of fun to look at. So we had our subject in a pink wig and we're using different colored lights. And we even brought in some objects to put in front of the camera so we could actually shoot through these objects and give our image just a little bit more depth. So we had a prism that we shot through, and then we also shot through some wine and like liquor decanters that we had laying around the house. So anytime you can put something between the camera and the subject, it's just gonna create a little bit more interest in the photo. So these photos really do lend themselves to a little bit more retouching because they are a little bit more highly polished. They're a little bit more produced. The lighting is a little bit more interesting. And this is like sometime when, okay, we really do want to retouch these photos. So we're gonna be taking the images through Lightroom and then into Photoshop for some light portrait retouching. We're gonna do some color correction. We'll show you how to retouch some hair and basically turn this from like straight out of camera to the final image that I think they came out really, really nice. All right, guys, this is gonna be a ton of fun. Let's go ahead and jump into Lightroom.
All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that free section of Photo Editing 201. If you want to learn more, check out the entire series, 101, 201, and 301 on Flurn.com. Thanks so much. I'll flurn you later. Bye, everyone.